Hey, welcome to the Backwoods Gourmet. Today is catch, clean, and cook some catfish. So y'all stay tuned. All right, so still zero dark 30. Stop, got some fuel. I'm gonna grab some ice. And uh, today, we got our fishing companion with us right here. This is Makita, and she is a fishing dog. She's excited, that's why her tongue's hanging out. Uh, I gave up on bass fishing this morning. I put out a big chunk of, of shad. And uh, I think we got ourselves a catfish. And feels like a really nice one. I don't know. I'm trying to hold a camera and fight this fish at the same time. Um, and I have no idea how any of this is coming out. Got a couple other rods. He's gonna go under my other line now. Yeah, it's a catfish. Pretty nice one too. Pretty nice one. Alright, so let's get him in the boat and we'll take a look at him. got him in that's a nice one the channel cat nice channel cat so definitely gonna be taking that bad boy home and eating them up about maybe three pounder so Makita's going crazy she wants to get him you smell him you sniffing him catfish it's a catfish yes it is I can't let you jump on it because he got fins Awesome. Let's get him in a live well.
All right, we got Mr. Catfish back to the house. He's been in the ice. So I'm going to show you real quick how to clean them. Clean them old school. All right, I've cleaned hundreds of catfish, okay? Thousands of catfish. I used to commercial fish for these guys. And I cleaned every one that I caught. We'll start with a super sharp knife. I'm going to come right behind that hard, hard bone right there. All right. It's going to cut through the skin only. And we'll cut him right up to the head. Here I usually come on around his belly a little bit here. This helps later. I just want to go just through the skin now. You don't want to try not to get into the meat. Alright. I'm going to do that to both sides. Make sure I'm completely started there. He's pretty stiff. Alright. Now whether or not these two meet on the top here don't really don't really matter. Sometimes it helps if they do. Alright, now we got catfish skin and pliers. Now you could probably sit here and hold him and get this started. We're just getting a hold of the edge of it. Alright. Peeling that skin right on back. I find this is actually easier. Um, when he's not so cold. What I'm going to do with this big guy, since he's giving me a little fight, I'll go ahead and hang him on the nail. Show you that. So over here in this post, I got a nail. And that's specifically there for, for catfish. Pop him on there. Start it around this side. <clears throat> All right. There you go. Now you're skinned and ready to be filleted. While the camera was off, we went ahead and got the head off of him and flayed one side. I usually just leave this back fin off of here. Really ain't good for anything. But that's a nice piece of belly meat. You don't want to throw that away. And uh, I think we had the camera off a while ago, but this thing has just got rolls and rolls of fat in him. I mean, just super fattest catfish I've ever seen. All right, I would go and flay him. Just pressing that knife right down against the backbone. I kind of come up at an angle along that fin. I like I, they call it the fatty meat there. Press my knife on the backbone all the way up to the top. And you see, there's also the part they call the fin fat right up in the back back here a lot of people don't like that so if you lose any of it don't think you really screwing it up now I catch them right along the top of the ribs just kind of peel that away from them now you got that bottom fin there go ahead and just work that backwards like that that comes off see that fin fat they call it right here the yellow yellowish meat These channel catfish tend to have that. And these belly pieces are awesome. If you see ever see uh, catfish nuggets in the market, that's what they are. It's the belly pieces. Alright, well, carcass and the parts we want. Let's get them on some ice.
right, so uh, it's dinner time. It's dinner time, man. I can't wait. So let's go ahead and see if our, we can get our camp stove fired up. Hey, got one. And my other one isn't working today, so let me get the torch. All right, got both burners going about the same level, about a medium high. I'm going to go ahead and put on our big giant Lodge cast iron fish pan. And uh, what we got going in that is some peanut oil. All right, best, best oil for frying because we're going to fry these up. We're going to do them catfish finger style. And we're going to do some sweet potato fries also. So let me, uh, let's go over to the, uh, the other table and I'm going to show you how we prep those fillets. You're ready to go in here. We'll just let this preheat a little bit, get warmed up. I always like to put the oil into a pan that's already hot. So we got our chilled catfish fillets out here. And the reason I like to do these in fingers is because you see this membrane on the back here where we skinned it. Okay, that's very difficult to fillet off of that wasting a lot of your meat. And it's really not necessary. If you try to uh, fillet it or to fry this whole, what's going to happen is it's going to curl up like this all the way around. This, this membrane is going to shrink and curl that fillet up just like that. So this process here prevents that from happening. So we're going to go about a 45 degree angle, maybe less, right across the fillet. So now when that curls, what it's going to do is it's going to twist like that. It's going to give you a really nice presentation. So on these bigger fillets, I always like to do this. Plus that's going to give you more surface area and they're going to be beautifully nice and crispy. And catfish is one of those kinds of fishes that you need to do <clears throat> real well. You need to cook it real well. All right, so we got all of our uh, fingers in there today. We're going to use some pre-prepared fish fry. It's a weeknight. I just don't have time to make all this stuff. This is uh, House of Autry fish fry. I found it to be pretty good. This seasoned, so we're not going to put any seasoning on ahead of time. Yeah, normally I would douse those guys with some Seminole Swamp season, Everglades, something like that. But when you're using a seasoned fish fry, <clears throat> I found that sometimes your end product can end up a little too salty for some people. Especially Mrs. Backwoods. She's really sensitive to salt. Not for health reasons, just because she didn't grow up eating a lot of salt. I did. I love salt. But, you know, you got to take your guests in mind. You can't just cook for yourself all the time. That no fun. All right. So we're going to go ahead and get those uh, nice and seasoned. We don't want a lot of it sticking to them here. We want the catfish to come through. So this is the original uh, crunchy coin, which has got a lot of cornmeal in. Now, if you don't have that pre-prepared, you can just season these with Seminole Swamp Season, your favorite season. Mix up uh, about 50-50 corn, you know, fine corn, fine ground cornmeal you find ground kind and uh, flour and that'll work just fine man those look great all right so what I'm gonna do now I spent a few minutes I'm gonna go ahead and take my instant read thermometer and I'm gonna stick it in there try not to touch the bottom and uh, kind of check it getting close to 275 I want to be about 300 so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop a test one right in the middle okay and when that starts sizzling really good we know it's time to drop all the rest So you got two burners under here and if it seems like one end is going a little slower than the other, first thing you want to do is just, you know, swirl your uh, your tool around in there and make sure that oil is circulating. This one seemed like it was a little low over here on the right, so I kicked that burner up just a little bit. But you can see the size of this pan, you could probably do a couple of good sized catfish at once in here. So I wanted to show you one of the uh, things I'm running into, one of the problems really. I wanted to get this to 300, about the max this Coleman propane powered camp stove will get this to is about 
260, about 40 degrees lower than what I was shooting for for the cook temperature on these. So what, it's still gonna work fine, just gonna take a little longer. Now this would probably yep. work better actually on my old style, you know, my pump up guy that runs a Coleman fuel. I can run them things like torches. I get, I think I get way more BTUs out of the old type, uh, you know, fuel camp stove than I can get out of this propane camp stove. But I know a lot of you guys have this stove, so that's why we chose to use this for the test run. All right, so I've been cooking catfish for a long time. Like I said earlier in this video, I used to commercial fish for these guys, and we used to cook them up probably once a week. And uh, there's a certain aroma given off by fried catfish when it's starting to get done. And what it is is the oils cooking out of that, uh, that you know, like we showed you when we filleted them, that, that thin meat. You know, they got a lot of fat right in their, in their actual flesh. And that's the flavor that some people that say, oh, I don't like catfish, you know, blah, 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 it's a bottom feeder, blah, blah, blah. That, uh, that can be cooked out of it. And it's going to taste just as good as any other kind of fish. But there's a certain point through this process where you start to smell that coming off of it. And it's kind of a strong, fishier flavor that you smell. You don't necessarily taste it. But you got to get past that process. And when, as soon as that smell, and you'll smell it if you're standing over it, cooking it like I am here today, you're going to smell it start up and then you're going to smell it subside. And you can see that now these are getting really nice and golden brown. And now that, that, um, that aroma, that strong, fishy smelling aroma is going away because most of these I've already rendered and that's what it's doing when you're smelling that it's rendering that fat that's within the meat and you can actually see some of the pieces start to shrink and that's the point where they're going to start to crisp up really good and they are right now it's taking a little longer than we you know we thought it would because of the limited BTUs that I have on it right now. Earlier I made some of this Napa cabbage slaw and if you've never tried making slaw this is red onions, grated carrots, Napa, uh, shredded Napa cabbage with just a little uh, just a little mayo and a little fresh lemon juice that is some awesome stuff right there I just kind of pulled that one out of the nog in there and You know, sometimes you just got to work with what you got. Build me a little log cabin of those sweet potato fries right there. All right. Make sure those are nice. All right, and over comes our catfish fingers. Those are really nice and crispy. I mean, they're nice and crispy. I just want to get a nice portion of those, just like that. All right, then uh, right on the side there, we got. Uh, normally, we'd use some limes, but right now I don't have any. So, but we use uh, green oranges here in the summertime, and you can squeeze those over your uh, over your seafood. And I want to have one down here by this by the uh, slaw also, because that you know you might want to pick that up a little bit. So that's going to be your garnish. And that is uh, 
catch clean and cook some catfish. Back with gourmet style. All right, guys. So let's go in and give that catfish a taste. You know, as usual, we're just gonna eat right off the platter. I know you guys can hear that crunch because you're always they always complain that I don't turn the mic off when I'm eating, but that's the reason why I don't do it. This is real TV here, okay? We're not uh, we're not sugarcoating it. Let's try some of that slaw. I know you can hear that crunch too. Perfect amount of citrus in there. That's about a tablespoon. If you like uh, to see how we did that, um, sorry, because I've tried doing videos on stuff like this, side dishes and whatever, and none of you guys watch. So, all right, guys. So I know a lot of you are complaining about you're not getting notified of new videos. Well, if you don't have your notifications enabled on your device. Even though you ring the bell beside the subscribe button, you're not going to get notified. You're unreachable to YouTube. So go uh, check out a couple videos on YouTube of how to enable your notifications on whatever type of device you're using to watch us, either that's TV. Hey, and we love you guys watching on TV. We're getting that's one of our biggest growing markets, okay? Uh, but if you're on PC, mobile, or tablet, you got to learn. Uh, how to turn on your notifications we know that there's only a very few of you out of the I don't know almost 50,000 subscribers now that have actually got both of those things enabled on their device so they can receive notifications when the Backwoods Gourmet channel loads a new video I mean it's a tiny amount it's less than 5,000 of you all right so go ahead and figure out how to get both of those done and you'll see every single Backwoods Gourmet video so you don't miss out on a great video just like this. So if you like what we're doing, please smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, notification bell, hey, turn on your notifications. If you'd like to see another great Backwoods Gourmet video, it's going to be right over there. And for a whole playlist of cooking fish and seafood outdoors, it's going to be right up there. We'll see you next time.